Hi everyone, this is Steph from Heinemann. As we come to the end of our season, we wanted to give you a few updates before we sign off for our summer break. This season, we've had the privilege of welcoming several new authors to the show and covering some new and exciting topics. We appreciate everyone who's tuned in. We'll be taking the next several weeks off, but if you want more audio content from Heinemann, like and follow Heinemann Audiobooks wherever you get your podcasts. We keep the feed up to date with samples of our audiobook catalog so you can easily find the right audiobook for you. We have so many exciting new audiobook releases, like Lorena Herman's Textured Teaching, Donalyn Miller and Terry Lassane's The Joy of Reading, and coming soon, Four Essential Studies by Penny Kittle and Kelly Gallagher, and Learning from Loss by Brittany Collins. To close out our season, we're sharing a sample of Patrick Harris's new audiobook, The First Five, a love letter to teachers where Patrick brings to light the realities of teaching, especially in the first five years. If you like what you hear, head over to Heinemann.com slash audiobooks to learn how you can access the full audiobook. As always, thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy this sample from the first five and look forward to reconnecting with you all in August. On October 23rd, 2011, I tweeted, Thursday, I'll officially be an education major again and for the last time. No more changing. I hugged my mom in the car and ran into the back of Michigan State University's Breslin Center. This was one of the few times I had ever stepped foot inside the basketball arena. I switched between an energetic sprint and a slow skip, moving my way through the crowd. One hand holding my green cap and the other bunching my gown to keep me from tripping and falling, but still being careful not to mess up my Nana's carefully ironed crease. The march from the curtain to the stage was euphoric. It was an out-of-body experience. I didn't hear the music or the crowd roaring. All I could feel were the hairs raising on my arm and the butterflies gathering. My four years flashed before me with each step toward the stage. I was chosen to give one of two senior responses during my college commencement. It was the ultimate thank you to my family for their unwavering support over the last four years. Being the first to do anything comes with a lot of pressure. And while your family wants to help, they may struggle to find the words or offer advice because it's a foreign experience. Despite not having gone to college themselves, my support system still found ways to help me navigate this new world. This was our moment, our time. On stage, I delivered my senior response saying, at orientation, my mind was consumed by the advice I was given and the articles I had read that said teaching was not the profession to enter. They told me to dream bigger. But as I maneuvered through my first year of college, I had many opportunities knocking on my door, and each and every one of them led me to working back with kids. And so from this, I have learned that when you have a calling in life, pick up. I was a black man speaking in front of the College of Education. The demographic of the graduating class studying education closely reflected the profession's demographic, I was one of a handful of black students in the college and the only black male educator in my program. I'm not sure what brought the tears first. It might have been being able to laser focus on my mom and the crowd, seeing her wipe her tears, or it may have been seeing my Nana alongside my now 102-year-old great-grandmother and recognizing the magnitude of this moment for our family. It might have been my siblings, some of whom have never met one another, blending together. My dad and my grandfather's proud gaze. It might have been hearing the piercing, all right, and the elongated, yes, from familiar black voices in the audience. The tears came running without warning at the podium, and with each step I took back to my seat, I was reassured that I was exactly where I needed to be. 
When I walked off that stage, I would prepare to start my teaching career carrying an immense amount of weight. I was feeling the heaviness of educational inequity for people who look like me. Considering black men are just less than 2% of the teaching force, the unicorns of the profession, I knew both the privilege and the pressure. It would be both an honor and a responsibility to answer the call. I was carrying Michael Brown's murder and the protests that followed. There was pressure building, the pressure of my queerness inside of me just waiting to be released, the pressure of perfectionism, not wanting to let down my family or my future students or myself. Knowing when I graduated college, I would begin living my life out and proud Still considering that the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network, or GLSEN, reports that one-third of LGBTQIA plus educators feel their jobs would be at risk if they were out to their administrators, and one-half of LGBTQ plus educators feel their career would be at risk if they were out to their students. More alarming, only 12% of LGBTQIA plus youth see schools as an affirming space. The Heinemann Podcast is a production of Heinemann Publishing. It is produced and edited by Steph George. Sound mixing by Steph George. Our creative producer is Lauren Audette. And our executive producer is me, Brett Whitmarsh. To learn more about the Heinemann Podcast, visit blog.heinemann.com. Thanks for listening. Copyright Heinemann Publishing.